You're listening to The Real Short Box, a comic book podcast made for geeks by geeks. Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in and listening. We are The Real Short Box. My name is Donald, and I am here with a delicious, decadent group for this podcast. We're talking Kevin, we're talking Chris, and we're talking... Big Sal. Yeah. In the house. <laughs> One quarter yeah. of us is high as fuck. I don't know One about quarter. that. Speak for yourself. Son. Make make your make make your guess. What make your me? guesses now. Make your guesses now. <laughs> Professor Turner uh, would never engage in cannabis in, in, in inhalation. No, sir. Mm, well uh, not inhalation, no. There's a lot of films that uh, that do, and uh, you know they they could or could not be legacy franchises, which is exactly what we're talking about today. We're talking about legacy franchises and what we feel needs to happen and what should not take place. What spawned this idea? Oh, you know uh, that movie, The Crow. Uh, you know, and that sequel that uh, may or may not have already come out. We don't know, but let's just talk for a moment about this. Uh, it's not Brandon Lee, of course. It couldn't be. He's dead. Yeah, uh, how did he pass away? Well, he was basically murdered, if you think about it. Uh, sure, it was an accident. But, negligence. Uh, Pure negligence. Yeah, it was negligence on set, and there was a bullet in the gun, and it fired and shot and killed him, and he bled out on set. Horrible, horrible day for the prop master. Horrible day. For the family, Brandon Lee, horrible day for uh, anybody that invested money into the film at that point uh, because they thought that there was no way it was ever going to continue that we get anything out of it uh, at that point. And, and I can understand that from an investor standpoint, but from a humanitarian standpoint, my God, how horrible would it have been to have been uh, any family member of Brandon Lee's family to have – uh, bore witness to it or to at least uh, have heard about it and to, you know, have the repercussions of him having been essentially murdered on set. Horrible. Mm-hmm. So flash forward to 2024 and we have the new crow and it is starring Pennywise. Am I wrong mm-hmm. here? You're not wrong. All right. So, the, character, Alfred, the, character Alfred Pennywise? It, the character from it. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah. the, re- the remake. Not, you know, Tim Curry. You know. It's Squarsgar, whatever, however yeah. you pronounce it. This, I want to say Scarsguard. Scar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's Bill Scarsgard who yeah. played uh, Pennywise is now going to be the lead in The Crow. He's going to be playing The Crow. And what we were talking about earlier before we started recording, uh, and Big Sal made a lot of sense with this. He said, why do they feel the need to always try to recreate the wheel when there is a mountain of source material, AKA comic books that James O. Barr had written, uh, who's the creator of the crow, by the way. Um, and, uh, other, uh, writers have written about the crow and story ideas and concepts out there that make sense. Why feel the need to go back to the beginning when the crow is a character that's reincarnated essentially. Like they're they're brought back to life um, to avenge uh, their death and uh, the wrongdoing, the wrong wrongful deaths of others, which is very ironic when you think about it. And let me just throw this idea out there. And I know this is going to sound crazy and I know it's going to piss a lot of people off, but that's what I'm here for. <laughs> you have the new Crow movie being about – a crow that's brought back to life to avenge the death of an actor that was performing in a movie called The Crow that was shot on set wrongfully. Are you serious? That's, I mean, the movie writes itself. Mm. You know, am I wrong? Nope. Am I wrong? Am You're I not. wrong? No. If now, now that's that's an Elseworlds type story. Don't get me wrong, and it's never going to happen. But if we pitch that idea. Without ever anything having happened to Brandon Lee, let's say that never existed and we pitched that idea, somebody would go, that's pretty brilliant. I love that idea. 
Now you try to pitch that idea. That is not going to fly at all. It's be not going to work. It'd be tasteless. Exactly. It would be seen as tasteless. Yes, absolutely. But the concept of that story, it sounds like fiction, but it really did happen. So now we have to look at like all these other stories within the Crow universe and what has been created. And the beauty about the Crow is it's not just one character. It's like in the mask. The mask wasn't always the same character. The mask would fall into the hands, not just Stanley Ipkiss, it would fall into the hands of other characters around that universe within that world. And the the unifying factor was the mask itself, which is uh, basically the god of mischief that was in that mask, Loki. Um, and it would also be, I believe his name was Walter, who was a giant like Frankensteinish Cretan that was after the mask that wanted the mask for dubious means and could never get his hands on it. So that was a unifying character was Walter basically and and the masks itself, which was rather interesting. Now that I feel much like the crow, if they take it and they and they reboot it, they don't have to use the same character. They can use different characters to tell a similar story, but they don't have to use the same characters. That's the beauty of the reboot within those worlds, but that's also a double edged sword. Because if you think about it, every film, it's a new character that gets the mask and does something crazy or is revived as the crow and does something crazy. So there's this constant similarity that's happening. Do you think a franchise can survive something like that, considering we only got one and a half mask films and we got two crow films technically? Uh, I think there was more or something in there at some yeah, point. Yeah, I think there was like four other films from The Crow because there's City of Angels and then there's Salvation. And then I, I think it's The Crow. Uh, I think it was like The Wicked, which had uh, uh, the dude that played John Connor uh, in Terminator oh, 2. Jesus. Really? Yeah, okay. he, Edward Furlong? Yeah, I think he was uh, in the in the last uh the last crow before this one that's coming out soon um i've seen them all yeah and uh, the only one that i felt like that had true potential to keep it going was city of angels but i it got weirder in in that movie like i felt like they're just they they were losing their direction with it you know, because it was a simple, mm-hmm. simple story from the first one, you know, like like a couple that wanted to get married on Halloween. And then like some goons did terrible things to his girl, shot the dude in front of his girl while he's bleeding to death. And he saw everything that they did to her. And then they threw him out of the window, falling down to his death. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Such It was heinous. You know what I mean? And then the crow was like. I grant you, you know, your, your vengeance, you know what I mean? And then when you find like, as the movie progressed, you know, you think that he's, his job is done when it wasn't because it was actually a lot bigger because somebody made that order to, to have his, him and his, you know, fiance get hurt. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like from them going to that, to, you know, city of angels where it was, it was okay, but it was just getting weirder where like, you know, he's like, you want, you want my power of the crow. And then all a bunch of crows came through him and then, you know, killed the the main, the main dude. It just, I was like, okay, they're trying way too hard. Let's, let's, all you got to do is simplify this thing. It's real simple. So, <clears throat> but like I told you before, uh, Donnie and Kevin and Chris, the, the there's the new there is a new crow comic there he's reimagined and he's he has his own characteristics that's different from eric uh, eric draven right that's his mm-hmm. name you know what uh, I mean? yeah. eric Dra- draven draven dragon you know i love the first crow it's it's a cult classic you know what i mean but it's like i feel like there's just certain movies that shouldn't be touched mm-hmm. you know like like dune Dune, like man, I cannot watch the original. I don't know if you guys ever tried watching the original, Ugh, like re- recently. I tried. 
Dude, it's a little rough. Yeah. Yeah. It's rough. Now that we're seeing like, you know, it's, it's the same thing, but it's just reimagined with better technology, you know, different actors. And the, the, the guy that's directing the movie is going the right direction because everybody's talking about it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what needs to be done instead of trying to remake it and take the same character and give them a different story. Shouldn't be doing that. It did that with right. RoboCop. And I hated that so much because RoboCop from the eighties is super untouchable. Even Peter Weller was in an interview, uh, stating to the interviewer saying like, um, you know, yeah, I heard that they're making, they're remaking RoboCop. And in my opinion, I'm not going to bash the actor or the director or the writer. All I will say is that I just believe that there are certain movies that shouldn't be remade and touched. And I totally agree with them. What did Paul Verhoeven have to say about it? Uh, I didn't, I haven't heard anything what he would say, but you know. Oh, you don't speak to him on a regular basis? No, I, I, lost, his, <laughs> I lost his number. <laughs> You know, lost, he wrote it. He wrote it on a piece of paper at the fair out here in LA one time. On uh, probably on one of those uh, deep fried Oreo uh, wrappers. It you was, know, yeah. And then the he oil it just, yeah. yeah. Happens I mean, all the time. I don't think sounds wrong. I mean, if you look, if you look at what they did to Star Wars, they destroyed Star Wars. They trying to bring that back. Um, so I, I totally, I totally understand where he's coming from. Um, they should just let. You know, yeah. let things let things lay where they're at. Like that's. I'm gonna that's, I'm gonna counterpoint that with Rogue One. Like Rogue yeah, One was a fantastic, uh, yeah, and the Mandalorian for the, for yeah, the mean, better that, part of two seasons anyway. Well, um, I mean, I guess I, I I guess you know prequels are a different beast. I think a little bit. I wouldn't say that the prequels. I would say like it's just a story that's in the movie pieces, that yeah. we don't see it. Yeah, I yeah. like that because that is that's originality because they're showing us a different point of view of what's happening in the war between the Republic and the and and yeah. and the, what the Senate what is it still called or the Galactic Empire? Yeah, and they've done that kind of thing uh, within the world of uh, like one shot films as well, just regular movies. Like for example, the uh, Final Girls or the Final mm -hmm. Girl, I think is what it was called. Uh, did a whole story and it did it in one movie where this girl had lost her mother at a very young age, but she would go back and watch her mom's films because her mom was an actor and she would watch her films. And that's how she could revisit her mother at any time. You know, she could see her in the movies and a freak accident happens in a movie theater where there's a, uh, a revival screening of the original film with her mom in it. And somehow she ends up with her friends inside that film. So she gets to relive and see all these moments in between that you didn't see in the film. Technically, we didn't see them either, but you see the response of the characters and stuff. So it was very clever and very well done in that instance. Yeah. So uh, any anytime you get something that fills in gaps in between, tells a good story, flushes out the characters more and entertains. I'm all in. Mm -hmm. But it's tricky. It's not an easy thing. I don't think it's that tricky. If you follow the formula to the T instead of just trying to be like, Oh, I want my, my, I want my watermark, you know, in this movie, you know, and then they're, they're just, they're doing one change that ruins that whole movie. Like, like for example, Paul, uh, Paul W S Anderson, he ruined the resident evil movies franchise. Yeah, the franchise, like him doing, okay, if you know nothing of the video game, okay, I understand that you like those movies, cool. But I grew up playing all the video games from 1, 2, 3, Code Veronica X, and even the Outbreaks, mm -hmm. you know? And throughout that whole storyline, there's not a person named Alice ever mentioned. There's Valentine. And it, it's just... You know, like, I, like if for me, I just feel like if you just follow the formula and just, you know what I mean? Like, like if they took Batman the animated series, Kevin, and made that shit live action, just do exactly what we saw in animation and just make it live action instead of like, you know, oh, let's tweak this here and tweak that there for my watermark. Like they must not like money. 
is what I'm saying and, and, and Warner Brothers or whatnot because because <laughs> like no, I'm right. just I'm just I like if they if they're so concerned about making money and making things right, all the animated stuff that we've had growing up in the nineties and early two thousands, just make that live action. Mm-hmm. Show show me a live action Superman movie where he landed on Apocalypse and Dark Side raises. You know, like the or, what if. or or might might I add, show me more of and, and they did this to a little bit in Man of Steel and I thought it was phenomenal. Uh and the animated series as well. Show me a little bit more about what took place on Krypton. You know? Yeah. I think they That's did right. that even with the sci fi series where they tried. Um, but show me all the action on Krypton first. I don't necessarily mm-hmm. even need to see Superman for a while. Uh, yeah. If the if the story is there and the action's good, tell me the story of the mother and father and what happened to them or the grandfather or, you know, the council and, and everybody on that planet. There's a whole planet, a whole wealth of stories. Yeah. And and to your point, uh, Sal, I have a question for you. Uh, did they or did they not? I thought they did. Did they uh, uh, create a Resident Evil television series? I thought it was for Netflix or something. They did. And they it's still so, they still yeah. messed it up, bro. Yeah. Still, was it, wasn't it called Raccoon City or something like that? Oh, they though so so the reboot is called Rac- Raccoon City. And they messed up all the characters of their characteristics in the like from the actors. Like mm-hmm. it was just so misplaced that I was just shocked in the direction that they went. Ooh. But the Resident Evil TV show that was on Netflix. It started out good, but then they just dropped the ball with just adding shit that was not in the video game. And it kills me. It simply kills me that like something so simple is right there handed it, handed to you in a silver silver plate. They're just handing it to you like, hey, this is the story. Just give it live action and, you know, and great, you know, uh, CGI effects like make me believe that I'm in my video game that people have grown up and played. I'll, I'll mm-hmm. say this. I, bl- I think that the, the animated films are pretty good. No, the animated films are amazing, but that's the thing that the guys that are doing the animated films, they're making it in Japan. The American version of the movies, the Americans are messing it up. Yeah. Mm. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. That's why they like, ship off a movie to Japan. Well, it, it it, it it shouldn't even matter if if a person makes a movie based off of a video game. I feel like it's mandatory to make that person play the video game so they could understand <laughs> yeah. it. You yeah. know what I mean? Look at what Heath Ledger did. He went to a comic book store and bought how many comic books about the Joker? Like what two. was it? A ho- I think it was two or three. Yeah, like you know he did. He was, <laughs> I have no idea. It was, no, it wasn't like two or three. It was like close to like fifty fifty books or something from the Joker. Yeah, he, he, they study the character. Yeah, he and then now not, not only did he study it, but he threw his own flavor that like I'm gonna a lot of people are gonna hate me for this, but I feel like him and Jack Nicholson are like neck to neck and, and the only reason I No, I agree. I, 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 agree I, can, I cannot I, agree. I cannot put one over above the other because number one, Jack Nicholson, the way he did it, like, you know, where he was being comedic and sadistic at the same time, you know being that you know that that joker version and then you have heath ledger that's just like the chelsea mm-hmm. smile yeah and it's just like yeah um. see joker is interesting it's kind of like it's, 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 it's pretty much it's like a shakespeare actually batman too they're like shakespearean characters in a way you, you can interpret yeah. them differently give mm-hmm. them a different interpretation and still it, it, it still be executed properly yeah you know yeah. michael those, Keaton those definitely are loved batman uh, yeah, interesting uh, alternatives, you know, or, or alternative ideas as far as like some characters, you have to stick to the formula. And if you go outside of that formula, it creates havoc. And mm-hmm. other characters are just tailor made to be given different scenarios. And I feel that's why we got a lot of what ifs and we got a lot of else worlds and et cetera, et cetera. And that's because those characters are iconic and you can throw them into any type of scenario. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm sure like if they did a what if the crow or something like that, people could find interesting ways to explain how this character came back to life or something. You know, they could even have like Frank and crow where somebody like took pieces of this dead person and created the crow. Or you could have where somebody reanimated an actual crow. Um, and then that was the care. You know what I mean? So there are yeah. ways that you could do it. It's just. People 
get in the mindset of a certain character and how that character has to act and be that they don't want to see anything else. And when they do, it upsets them. So uh, Mm -hmm. particularly with with visual. uh, If the visuals don't match, how many times have we sat through a Marvel film and went, seriously, this is the costume they're going with? Like, Mm -hmm. what the hell? How many seasons did it take before we got a proper Daredevil costume? The Green Lantern movie. How many seasons of Smallville did we have to go through for Superman? Did he even put on the cape? Or was it the the last episode? Very last episode, last like minute of the show. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. Yeah. That kind of thing. You know, that that you'll, it just drives you nuts. And you're like, uh, you have, again, to Sal's point, you have all this wealth of knowledge in front of you. You have this series and you're not, you're not going to go with that. Why? Like they were going to uh, – recently, Marvel announced a lot of cancellations, and right before that, uh, they announced that uh, the Silver Surfer is not going to be played – it's not going to be a female character. Yeah, I heard about that. I was like – And I was like – Also, the girl duh. from the Queen's uh, Gamut is not playing – No. Uh, Silver Surfer. Yeah. No, like, like I said, like there's nothing against you know having a strong female – you know, character out there. They did that. They did it so perfectly in the eighties and nineties. Like we had Sigoni Weaver. We had, uh, uh, Linda Hamilton. Sarah Connor. Linda Hamilton. Yeah. I was about to say Sarah Connor, but that's yeah, Linda Hamilton. Even, uh, uh J- Jamie Curtis. Um, mm-hmm. you know, just there's multiple people, like multiple women, like, uh, Charlie Theron. You know what I mean? Like, there's some there's some badass Laura, women's Laura out Croft, there. Laura Croft, Laura Croft, Laura Croft, yeah, Angelina Jolene, you know, like, um, they if they want to show women empowerment, give the women comic books better stories. I'm sitting like when I went to the movies with Donnie and we watched the Marvels, mm-hmm. I, I was just like, dude, like, <laughs> this is a piece of shit movie. I like I I really? couldn't I did not really? like you, you hated it that, that much I hated it, bro. Even when Donnie was laughing because he had he loved the scene where like they went to the world of singing. Great, I, I was that. I fucking hated it. I was just like, oh, Mister Sal, you need to rewatch why? the movie. No, watch the movie. No, no, thank you. It's okay. It's the story was not strong. I'll well, tell the you villain, that. the villain wasn't strong. I agree with that. But I like the way the three ladies interact with each other. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, there's like I said, there's certain things that are cool. But just because there's certain things that are cool in a movie with a weak story, it makes it horrible. Wasn't the villain in that movie Tom Hiddleston's wife? Uh, yeah, it's his girlfriend that they, they just had a child Girlf- together recently. Yeah. Girlfriend. yeah. Loki, Loki's wife or a girlfriend? Yeah. Well, a girlfriend. Yeah. You see, but look at what they're doing with Loki, the TV show. It's amazing. You know what I mean? Like, they just, I just don't know what, what, what needs to be said to the Marvel heads to be like, dude, look at your source material. Mm -hmm. Look at all these comic books that are out here that have great storylines. I'm still upset what they did to my boy, the Hulk in the end game. Yeah. Yeah. How is it a, the device to snap the fingers you're going to hurt somebody that is made of that source. And I'm talking about gamma in my mind. When I was watching it, I was like, bro, we're about to get the glimpse of fucking world breaker. Just imagine world breaker versus Thanos with no infinity rings. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You would buy, he would have got his salad tossed. Yeah. You know, that's what I wanted to see. No, we didn't get that because what did the Russo brothers say? Oh, we didn't know what to do with them. We don't like them. Scumbags. Scumbags. What, Scumbags. what, about, what, what, about, what about the Fantastic Four movie, uh, Rise of the Silver Surfer, and Galactus is turned into a freaking cloud? Yeah. I'm and then Green talking. Lantern followed that recipe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, with, my uh, God, dude. It's like no one learns. It took the Independence Day. You know, ominous cloud before, you know, the mothership comes. Everyone wants to copy that, yet you don't know how to do it correctly. See, mm-hmm. what makes me upset about it is that 
we in the end of the movie we get a uh, a Sinestro putting on yes. the yellow ring. Yes. And we don't even get that. We don't because, get Sinestro you know versus uh, Hal Jordan. Or later I'm, on, I'm, we could have seen I'm, we could have seen the core Sinestro core. Yeah, I I'm just I'd rather just scrap that shit. Like take Green 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 Lantern, just scrap that movie, make it non-existent. Just what like Ryan Reynolds did in Deadpool, he shot right. it. Okay, yep. let's bring in uh, what's his name? Um, oh Ted Cord. Ted Cord. No, no Green Gardner. Lantern. No, Rainer. no, the black guy. John Stewart. Oh, John Stewart. John Stewart. Jesus, it was in the top of my tongue. Let's bring in John Stewart because he's actually one of my favorite lanterns because, you know, like. I feel like, you know, his demeanor and his his will willpower was I think way more focused than Hal Jordan's. I, I thought you like Jessica Cruz too. Who? <laughs> so that's a no. Uh but yeah, with Green Lantern, I, I can totally agree there. We are actually getting a Green Lantern series, if I recall. I don't I don't yes. know if it's it, I don't know when exactly it's happening, but it is on the on the docket. It is on the uh, on the dossier. It is on the roll of death. We pray they don't use a stupid digital costume. Yeah, we'll see. Dude, we'll see what's gonna. Dude, happen. the guy the guy that played Black Manta should play John Stewart. Is it Green Lantern? Yeah. Is yeah. Green Lantern in the Superman movie too? He was supposed to be, but uh, I, the studios uh, told them told uh, Zack Snyder to to pull him out. Because they were bringing in a Lantern movie, an animated movie, and they no, didn't I meant, want. I meant the new one, the like James, James Gunn's, Gunn's, James Gunn's version. Oh, yeah, isn't, he, isn't there a Green Lantern in that? I believe so. I have. Uh, no I'm not 100, percent but probably. Yeah, Superman think, Legacy. Yeah, I believe. I so. think there was a lot of those people were were cast in there. It's going to be a whole hodgepodge of superheroes, which makes sense. A lot of people always want to be. Batman yeah, should they, just be a they, Batman they, film. They, Superman, Fillion's playing Guy Gardner. Superman should just be a Superman film, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? You should mm -hmm. have these characters play these certain things, and that's it. And there shouldn't be anything else in there. I disagree. In the comic book world, how many times on a cover of Superman have you seen another character that guest starred? A shit ton. Yeah. How many times have you seen a guest star on Batman on a cover? A shit ton. It just mm -hmm. happens. It's just the way it is. <laughs> just accept it. Enjoy the ride. And hopefully it's a good ride, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and Nathan Fillion's going to be playing Guy Gardner. So, yes, you will get a Green Lantern. Oh, okay. And a Metamorpho, too. Yeah, I'm excited for that. And maybe a Plastic Man. We're getting a Mr. Terrific as well. Get a Hawk uh, Girl. We're getting a Hawk Girl. Yeah, there's a whole load of characters that are coming down the pike. That, and Miss Tessmacher is going to be in it, just like she was in the original movie. You know you know who I want them to bring in this in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Who? Ooh. Gladiator. Oh, you know what's funny? I was just watching the X-Men animated series where he picks up and jacks up a juggernaut. Yeah, he picks him up and throws him across just the toss river. him to the other side yeah. of the world somewhere. Yeah, yeah, juggernaut socked him and it just did nothing and he just grabbed his hand and threw him across the lake. Like nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's, he's basically he's a, he's a, Superman. He's a yeah. Omega threat level. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. No doubt. No doubt. And then again, Absolutely. Marvel has all those Superman type characters, the Sentry, Sentry, yeah. which they they're trying to do first. You could obviously, you know, that's what they were trying to well, do. I f I think they need to like, you know, stay focused and figure out who's going to be Doctor Doom because oh Secret yeah, Wars is that's coming. important. That's important. Yeah. You got to cast Doctor Doom you know, properly. Me personally, if I was Marvel, I would be hitting up Henry Cavell to be Doctor Doom. Because the way I saw him become a bad guy in Mission Impossible, bro, I think he could. I think he would, he could be a really good Doctor Doom. You think he'd be a good Victor Von Doom? Really? Absolutely, absolutely. I could see. I don't him think do it's a terrible choice. I think he could. Not my first, but I don't think it's a terrible choice. Who would you pick for Victor Von Doom? Um, can't pick ooh, yourself. Susan Sarandon probably. She did oh, a really good job. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, we get Beetle Sally movie. Fields in there while we're at oh, it. Playing like Ted Cord's sister. Oh god. Ted Cord's evil sister. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dude, that dude that he would be a really good Ted Cord. The guy that I forgot his name that you said that was that that was his voice, right? From the Yeah, uh Jason Sudeikis, I believe. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could totally see him be uh, Ted Korg. Yes. Yeah. Who would yeah, you yeah. like to he, see? Uh, be a great choice. Who would you like to see as Victor Von Doom, uh, Kevin? If you had a, hmm. you could pick somebody. You know. I'm just trying to think who would be a good Victor Von Doom. I'm trying to imagine someone playing the voice. You know who wouldn't mind if he was younger? Sean Bean. Sean Bean? The guy that gets killed in almost every freaking movie he's in? If he was younger, like a younger Okay. Person. No, I like that. I think that I think Victor Von Doom could be a little older. Pedro Pascal, Pedro Pascal, he's he's looking like he's in his forties or fifties. I mean, we can get an older yeah. his 40s. James Bond. Or well, we not just Bond, uh, Victor Von Doom. We don't know what direction they're even going to go in the fi- uh, Fantastic Four film. It's Anyways. supposed to take place in the 60s. 60s? Yeah, it's supposed to take place in the original 1960s where they originated. Okay. Well, I'm definitely going to give it a shot, you know? Since I, well, gave hey. the, I gave the other one a shot that was just straight, like, Poo-poo. garbage. It was straight caca. Well, hopefully this time, hopefully the fourth time, pun intended, is the charm. Because mm-hmm. this 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 would be the fourth iteration of Fantastic. Well, like I said, like yeah, you know, technically, the first, the first two weren't bad. They just made simple mistakes, like ruining the greatest, you know, Marvel villain in history and turn him mm-hmm. into a rain cloud. Like I just I couldn't believe it mm-hmm. because I had high hopes. Like because remember when he's like passing was it Jupiter and mm-hmm. you see his you see his crown. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, shoot. And then all of a sudden we see a, a, a rainy cloud. And I'm like, why? Yeah. Yeah. This is the he's dumbest thing I've ever seen. I swear, if I ever meet the guy that decided to do that, he's going to get easy. How? Killed. Bang. Right in the kisser, right? Yeah. A dingity, dingity, ding. Yeah, you know? I agree. Well, I agree. Well, with, well, with that, we thank you, brothers and sisters, for listening in on this audio podcast. Please subscribe. Please leave a like. Please tell your friends. Please tell your enemies about the real short box. We have a lot of fun here. We have our Monday live streams. We try. We also have wonderful advertisers like Half's Hot Sauce. Has beautiful, tasty sauce. And you can oh get it. Oh my God. Where- yeah. Delicious sauce. And then Splattered <laughs> Frog Beer Brewing Company. You can, you can, uh, you can. You had to say sauce and then splatter. Such. Delicious this so oh, get get a room, guys. <laughs> I'm just trying to wrap this up. You're taking forever. You're searching for words. You're stumbling on yourself. <laughs> Let's get moving. Have a great night, guys. We don't see you out and about anytime anytime soon, that is. Perhaps we'll see you. At a mysterious, but always lovely and sometimes quiet comic book shop. This has been the real short box. We'll see you at the comic shop. Thanks for listening.